sometimes the biggest problems can be solved by a simple idea, like a bottle of ketchup. Too often, we find ourselves chasing big solutions when the best ideas usually come from the simplest of places. These simple ideas can lead to institutional change if we're open to it. We can find simple ideas by imposing limits on ourselves, just like we've done working in healthcare in Ghana. But let's get back to the ketchup. Sanford Health operates 24 clinics in Ghana. We provide primary care in rural and peri-urban areas of Ghana. We really pride ourselves in providing quality health care that's accessible to all Ghanaians. The majority of our patients use Ghana's national health insurance, which is a government-run health insurance program that offers coverage to everyone based on a sliding fee scale. One of the biggest challenges that we've faced has been keeping medications on the shelves of the pharmacies in our clinics. And when we run out, the impact is felt immediately. It seems that there is just no communication system in the world that's better than that of word of mouth in Ghana. We'll start to see our patients drop within a day. One clinic went from 200 patients a day to 50 overnight. This problem is really not unique to, unique to Samford or even to healthcare in Ghana. I've experienced out of stocks in a variety of businesses within Ghana including a chicken restaurant that was out of chicken. Um, we can start, it can start really with the order being placed when the item has already run out of stock, and it might end with the vendor or distributor just not having the item we need in their warehouse. We were experiencing these outages on an all too regular basis. It was impacting the quality of patient care and our bottom line. The first key to solving this problem was really stepping outside of our comfort zone. One of the benefits of working in a large healthcare system is we have access to experts in literally every area of healthcare. And it just so happens that keeping medications on the shelf is pretty important in a healthcare system. What we learned was that the solution to our problem was really as easy as buying ketchup. It's called the two bin system. The best way to understand it is to think about how you stock ketchup in your own kitchen. You keep one bottle in the fridge for everyday use. That's bin number one. When that bottle runs out, you go to your pantry to get your backup bottle. That bottle is bin number two. You move your backup bottle to your fridge for everyday use, and then you add ketchup to your grocery list so your pantry gets restocked and you never run out of ketchup. That, in essence, is the two bin system. A bin equals a 30-day supply of a given medication or supply. When the bin runs out, you run into a visual queue. In our case, it's a piece of tag board that has the name and quantity of medication on it. You take that tag board and put it on a shelf or in a basket so you know you need to reorder it. Then you go back to your storage room to get your second bin, which also contains a 30-day supply of that medication. Orders are then placed within a week, which gives the vendor ample time to deliver the goods before your backup bin runs out. There's still some kinks to be worked out in the system, but the overall impact has been a dramatic decrease in the out-of-stock medications and supplies. Our patient volumes have increased as we become known as a clinic where patients can trust and rely on to have in-stock medications. In fact, we're currently exploring the option of opening our clinic pharmacies to be walk-in pharmacies, which means that a patient can bring their prescription from other clinics to our clinics to have them filled. There's also been some ancillary benefits to this, aside from simply having in-stock medications and supplies. We've been able to better predict and control our pharmaceutical and supply expenses. A bin in general will last about 30 days, so no, we know ahead of time what our monthly expenses are gonna be. Also, vendors can rely on us for regular orders, which increases their cash flow and allows them to have more medications in stock. And finally, Medications don't have a chance to expire on our shelves because of stockpiling or hoarding because we use the first-in, first-out system. Providing healthcare in Western Africa comes with a whole host of challenges and limitations that we don't experience here in the U.S. The most notable has been financial. The average national health insurance reimbursement is $8 per patient in Ghana. That's like two bottles of ketchup. That includes the visit with the provider, any labs, and any drugs they get from the pharmacy. 
Our goal is to create a financially sustainable healthcare model that will be around for years to come. And so in furtherance of that, we don't have thousands of dollars to throw at a problem. We have to work within these limitations to find new solutions to old problems. But these limitations are really where we've also seen our biggest rewards in Ghana. There's really two sides to every financial limitation situation in a business. You've got your expenses and your revenue. And really, one can only go so far in cutting expenses. You need staff, you need structures, you've got to have medication, supplies, and equipment, and you have to invest in training your staff to offer quality care. These are just basic needs of a quality healthcare system. So you streamline these areas to make them as efficient as possible, but then it's time to start looking at your revenue. And that's where the fun starts to happen. The first step is finding the idea. The ideas come from everyone and from everywhere. People just really need a vehicle to try their ideas out. The key is to start small. In a resource-limited environment such as ours, sometimes you have no choice but to start small. But even when you don't, we can also force those limitations. One of the greatest concepts ever invented is that of a beta. We hear it all the time. A new app is released in a beta form. A new line of software is called beta. Do you know what beta means? Not quite done. It's really all about getting the concept into the market so that customers can react to it and make it what they want. A great example of this is our Express Clinics. Through talking to one of our clinic directors, we learned that there were patients in our clinics who were looking for a different type of service than we were offering. We came up with the idea for Express Care. It's an appointment-based system that really offers a one-stop shop for healthcare. Patients make an appointment, and then instead of moving through the clinics to all of the areas, vitals, the consulting room, lab, and pharmacy, everything happens in one room. Patients were willing to pay a premium for this service, which really would increase our revenue and allow us to provide better care to all of our patients. Because this area was unknown to us and really outside our main line of services, we didn't want to invest a lot into a program that we weren't sure if would work. So, by using resources that we already had, such as equipment and staff, we were able to get it up and running within six, six weeks of when we first came up with the idea. Since we had hadn't invested many resources in it, we were then able to just sit back and see what happened without stressing over the bottom line. It was a true beta. We came up with the best product we could based on what we thought our patients were looking for, and we got it up fast. Everything that happened after that was just learning. It did take a while for Express Care to take off, but slowly we started to see patients, but not the patients we were expecting. Instead of coming from our existing patient base, there was a lot of private mutual health insurance companies who were looking for a unique service to offer to their members. We're now in the process of opening up our fifth Express Care Clinic, and each one is starting out small so that we can learn and provide a better product to our patients. We can learn a lot from Ghana. If you're not actually in a resource-limited environment, you can impose your own limitations. Too often, large organizations only accept perfect. Instead of perfection, what if we focused on the pursuit of perfection through iteration? What if we intentionally released a partially finished product and told our customers that we needed their help in finishing it? World clinics like ours is one opportunity to run small experiments, but we can do the same thing anywhere in the world, including our own backyard. We want to go big, but the best way to get there is through small steps and then scaling. Find out what we're great at and what the customer really wants, and then once you become an expert on it, expand from there. It might come from a bottle of ketchup or a clinic in another part of the world, but if we're open to new ideas and ready to test and iterate, there's really no limit to what we can accomplish.